It's absolutely crazy to think how much time we have spent just staring at these symbols that are on the walls in Halo 3 ODST, trying to make some sort of connection to how this fits into the larger scope of Halo and how this may be a secret Easter egg that only a few select members at Bungie who worked on Halo 3 ODST actually know the true meaning behind it. And while we have looked through every single detail, every corner in the entire video game itself, to this day, there's still no definitive answer to what these glyphs could possibly mean. And sure, we've gotten some interesting hints and clues dropped that could lead us in a specific direction, and along the way we've been able to elaborate and explore different aspects of Halo 3 ODST's storytelling, the vast amount of literary references and homages throughout ODST, we've even crafted together some very clever and interesting theories as to in the lore who would have put those glyphs there, but still to this day there hasn't been a concrete answer as to what these glyphs mean and what secret lies beyond them that only a few developers actually know. Now, way back when we first started covering the glyphs in Halo 3 ODST, Marty O'Donnell, who was the composer of Halo 3 ODST and also did the music for all of the Halo games back in the day, definitely reignited a lot of the ODST glyph search and the interest in people trying to craft together what all of this could mean. I mean, people have been speculating about these glyphs for over a decade, and all of a sudden, within the last year, more clues started being released through Marty O'Donnell, which has led a lot of fans down this deep rabbit hole trying to figure out and piece together if there is another secret that we are still missing after all of this time. And that peaked interest definitely led us down the route that got us to all of those massive Dante Inferno connections that were really cool, and it made us more familiar with some of the other literary references found in ODST and across the Halo universe. But now Marty O'Donnell got himself a Discord server, and the ODST glyph discussion over there is honestly next level. Level. And along the way, Marty has definitely been dropping a ton of cryptic messages in the ODST glyph discussion chat over on his Discord server. And back when he tweeted out that one tweet that led a bunch of people down a single rabbit hole, now we have hundreds of rabbit holes that we can go down and explore based off of these new cryptic clues, potentially, that have been posted in Marty's ODST glyph discussion on his Discord server. Also, if you want to join his Discord server, the Marty Army, there's a link in our Discord description below. So just for context, this rabbit hole that has now exploded into the size of a crater is just all over the place. It's absolutely bonkers where some of these clues take us, whether it's clues pointing to the Cortana letters from 1999, way before Halo even released, to more of T.S. Eliot's poems, to even a possible video presentation speculating who killed Paul McCartney that was recorded in 1999, even though he's currently still alive. What on earth do these clues mean and what can we take away from them and what could this mean about, most importantly, these Halo 3 ODST glyphs? Well, we've done our best to try to dissect everything, and the journey just to figure this stuff out is very interesting. Okay, let's start off at the beginning. Back in November or so, Marty O'Donnell started up his Discord server, the Marty Army, and after a little bit of time, one of the mods set up an ODST glyph discussion chat just to keep everything in one place. And the first post that Marty made in that glyph discussion chat was his promise that there would be no more hints, and that lasted for about a day. Now at this point, the discussion was a little bit more casual. There weren't any new leads in the ODST glyph discussion at that point, so it was a lot of just regular ODST chat. And Marty just dropped in randomly one day and dropped a link to a presentation by a Brian Moriarty called Who Buried Paul 1999 who killed Paul McCartney. Now, Marty mentioned that he was at that actual talk when it happened in 99, and he said 15 years later, he then got to work with Paul McCartney. And we all know that Marty O'Donnell did work with Paul McCartney when he was at Bungie working on Destiny 1. So with that, it was just kind of an interesting video presentation on conspiracy theories or something. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit and revisit that because some more hints and clues started to come from Marty's Discord account and the conversation definitely focused in on the next couple of things. This is probably the biggest thing that people started focusing in on, which definitely was the catalyst for a lot of the discussion, but Marty posted
posted on his Discord server before the beginning, inside the letters, Twilight Kingdom's final meeting, not with a whimper, eyes are sunlight, revealed at dawn. Now, a lot of these lines are sections taken out of T.S. Eliot's poem, The Hollow Men, which we know had a direct correlation to the ODST glyphs all the way back when Marty first tweeted out some cryptic hints to the whole ODST glyph search. And also, T.S. Eliot's poem, The Hollow Men, has a ton of references within the Halo universe. Remember, this is the whole poem that the whole cactus land allegory first was kind of brought up. Now, interestingly enough, two of the lines don't actually show up in T.S. Eliot's Hollow Men, so that was just worth noting at the time. And then Marty also posted that same day just the words Holmes, Nemesis, constellations. So yeah, things definitely weren't very clear right off the get-go. Now, it didn't take too long from some of the community members who were on the Discord server to realize that the first letter of every line in the section of poetry that Marty had posted spelled out the letters B-I-T-N-E-R which spells the name Bittner. Now, this may seem a little bit vague or random. There was a Nathan Bittner who worked at Bungie way back in the early days of Halo Combat Evolved, and he is allegedly known for being the author of the Cortana letters, which were a series of letters that were used to kind of build up anticipation for Halo Combat Evolved, which were sent out back in 1999. In the Cortana letters, we have a version of of Cortana, who seems rampant and more of an antagonistic character, as opposed to the Cortana we see in Halo Combat Evolved itself, but this has always been a fan favorite type of writing and kind of a more mysterious aspect of the Halo iceberg, to say the least, as a lot of the ideas from the Cortana letters kind of got retconned when Halo actually came out, though some lines of dialogue directly from the Cortana letters were brought back when Halo 3 released in the level Cortana itself. But notably enough, the Cortana letters do have a direct reference to T.S. Eliot's poem, once again, The Hollow Men, this time directly saying that T.S. Eliot was incorrect. This is the way the world ends. Kind of alluding to the idea that T.S. Eliot's famous poem, where he says, this is the way the world ends, not with a bang, but with a whimper, or however he says it verbatim. Cortana's dialogue here kind of undermines the poet himself, suggesting a different way that the world ends. Still, nothing directly obvious, just from a reference to the Cortana letters. Matter of fact, the Cortana letters have been brought up many times already because of the relation directly to T.S. Eliot, which fans have dug into with this whole glyph search for quite some time. The next day, Marty, obviously having fun with his Discord server, decided to post another cryptic message, this time saying, Friar William shaved with this, which at first glance, I have no idea what this means. Fortunately, smarter people in the Discord server quickly made the connection to William of Ockham, who back in the late 1200s, early 1300s, was an English Franciscan friar and theologian, and essentially is known for popularizing the idea or the law of parsimony, also more popularly known as Occam's Razor, which is this theory that entities should not be multiplied beyond necessity, or when trying to explain something, the simplest explanation is usually the best one, and you ought to shave away the unnecessary parts or assumptions. And while this idea has existed long before William of Occam, he is known for how effective he was with utilizing utilizing this concept, hence the use of the term Occam's razor, which nowadays is used in regular conversation, kind of to describe the idea of getting to the point and kind of cutting away all of the excess parts, which may be something that we, as a community looking for answers to glyphs, might need to consider, considering how crazy and wild some of the theories have expanded to. Then Marty went on to post some more interesting poetry, heavy with silt, Acheron swells, Mista, Kurtz, understands, in the singing wind, staves crossed, hope only of empty men. Now, these last four lines all are relating back to T.S. Eliot's Hollow Men directly, though the first two lines don't explicitly have anything to do with Hollow Men, but both Archaon and Silt are heavily referenced in Dante's Inferno, which does kind of make sense considering not only does T.S. Eliot's home, the Hollow Men, make direct references to Dante's Inferno, but we've already made huge connections in our other video with Dante's Inferno being this 
this allegory that ODST pays a major homage to. But this time around, the first letters of these lines are H A M I S H. And unless this is a direct reference to my friend Spartan Blood, whose name is Hamish, considering the fact that the last message was Bittner directing us to the Cortana letters, and the Cortana letters were addressed to a Hamish Sinclair, I think we're on the right track to think that this is confirmation that the Cortana letters may play a bigger role in whatever mystery Marty is leading us down in this instance. Marty then went on to post this picture saying, huh, just found this detail of an old Halo 3 era picture where you can see some Bungie staff members, including Marty. He also posted a close up of a Da Vinci texture, one of those untextured objects that show up in a few instances in Halo 3 and ODST. And they always look funky because they never had their textures fully put on them. As for these clues, I'm still a little bit stumped how and if this ties together in any explicit way. Really trying to stick close to Occam's razor here and not overthink things, but it's getting a little bit hard not to. Okay, let's go back to this specific video though of who buried Paul from 1999, because it doesn't take too long when you look at the Holmes nemesis constellation to make the connection that in Sherlock Holmes, Holmes's nemesis or his antagonist is Moriarty and the presentation he had just posted in the same conversation a day earlier was presented by a Brian Moriarty and if you just look through the transcript or watch the video itself he talks a bit about something called constellations so that could easily be our Holmes nemesis constellation little mini puzzle solved. So there's obviously a massive significance to this video. So we went in and kind of watched it and paid attention to see what important things we could take out of it. And it was really interesting and extremely insightful considering the situation that the ODST glyph hunting community is kind of in at this point. Now the whole thing about Paul McCartney is interesting because this whole speech kind of opens up with this story of this massive conspiracy theory that has existed for decades within the Beatles fandom. It's essentially a popular urban legend and conspiracy theory alleging that Paul McCartney of the Beatles actually died in 1966 and was secretly replaced by a lookalike, much like Avril Lavigne in modern day. This ended up spreading into this massive rumor and before too long fans started looking to the songs and album covers covers for different clues with believers stating that there are a ton of hints and little messages hidden throughout a ton of the Beatles works where the remaining members of the band are trying to communicate to their fans this so-called truth. Some of the biggest hints or clues that fans have mulled over for years is in the song Glass Onion when Lennon sings, here's another clue for you all, the walrus was Paul, or in the cover photo for the album Abbey Road. It's a big deal that McCartney was barefoot and he's walking out of step with the rest of them. This led to a ton of radio stations and news outlets reporting on this major conspiracy theory and in an interview John Lennon did deny the rumor saying that it was insane but also pointed out that it was really good publicity for their album Abbey Road. And while it's incredibly interesting to read the theories of a funeral procession being depicted on the album art of Abbey Road with Lennon representing a heavenly figure, Ringo Starr dressed in black to symbolize the Undertaker, and George Harrison in denim representing a grave digger. Then we have McCartney who of course was barefoot and apparently that means to symbolize the idea of a corpse. People then looked into the license plate numbers thinking that that had something to do with it where the 28 if would have represented what McCartney's age would have been if he was still alive while the LMW stands for Linda McCartney weeps or Linda McCartney widow and the fact that he had been replaced had to be proven because McCartney was left-handed though this McCartney was holding a cigarette in his right hand, meaning he has to be an imposter. It's a really, really fun conspiracy theory to just dive your head into and read all of these connections that people have made over the years. But just like any conspiracy theory, when you're on the outside looking in, you definitely can pick apart some things as coincidences or maybe some stretches that are maybe tied together, even if there isn't necessarily explicit evidence more than just a few hunches. So going back to Brian Moriarty's presentation, opening with this story,
story is really interesting because he then turns the story into something unique when it comes to video game development, in which he calls these constellations, which is an approach to how to build a world or universe in game development that is interesting and intriguing for players, even if you're limited in what your actual capabilities are with the game itself. Listen to this section real quick. If you want your virtual worlds to appear deep and rich, don't try to define everything explicitly. You'll never ship anything before Christmas that way. <laughs> Instead, try what John and Yoko did in Revolution 9. Mix in a little chaos. Select a random game event, something harmless like a distant sound effect, and make it occur according to a regular pattern, also chosen randomly. And watch your players assign their own dramatic significance and tie it all together for you. It's really interesting because he's pointing out explicitly what we've been doing in Halo all of this time. Ever since the beginning of Combat Evolved, Bungie has never been explicit in just explaining the Halo universe to fans. It always was a mysterious structure that never had a full explanation, and slowly little details would be revealed explaining the size and scope of what players were facing, but it was often left up to the players themselves to find the significance in the story and put put together these little details and make these connections. And I think to an extent, Bungie always had this ongoing relationship with its own fan base, where a lot of these threads and ideas that would be connected by fans would maybe be elaborated on in a future title, or new threads and shiny things would be dangled for fans to latch onto, and in a way, or a sense, feel rewarded for taking that extra moment to stop and look at all of the little details along the way. If we knew outright the glyphs didn't have have an explicit easter egg or secret to them, would we stop and analyze every little detail in ODST along the way? Would we have even noticed the Dante's Inferno references or these other little references to T.S. Eliot? Would we have just moved on and sped ran ODST for the 100th time? Listen to this next line from that same video. To constellate is to apply order to chaos. When faced with any kind of new experience, be it images or sounds or even just a strange idea, we marshal our personal knowledge and experience and project it into the novelty to imbue it with meaning and significance. And what kinds of meaning and significance are we most likely to project? The meanings we expect to see. The significance we want to see. And I think ultimately this brings up a very important point here. Had we not stopped and looked at these glyphs to try to figure out what they meant, sure, we'd miss out on these really amazing, subtle references to Dante's Inferno that maybe on the nose you're like, oh yeah, that's like Dante, but Chasm 10 reference, or the Nine Circles of Hell, or the Prophet being Worms of Treachery, all of those little things we found along the way, I would have never looked into or tried to explore had we not just started trying to figure out what these dumb glyphs mean. And of course, I love the fact that people will continuously look into every clue that's ever dropped into the future and continue to look into it and not only look at clues directly but also think outside of the box like when Marty asked what's better following the breadcrumbs or following the breadcrumb droppers and some of the answers are you know what you would expect eating the bread baking the bread being the bread I think if we look at that Occam's razor hint as any clue we should just look at the glyphs specifically for why they are there those why glyphs exist so players specifically ask the question, why are these here? It's literally the simplest solution, but since Bungie spent so much time crafting this universe with so many nods, Easter eggs, and homages to different literary works, different inspirations, and other types of things just hidden throughout the universe of Halo, there's an infinite number of things that fans can continue to dig into for years to come and still uncover new references and clever homages to other things that are existing within the Halo universe. I don't think it's crazy to think that when Marty saw a lot of people still looking for the glyphs a decade later, jumping on board with pointing out something as simple as a T.S. Eliot poem would do exactly what the glyphs were meant to do when they were originally put there. Make players ask the question, why are they here? And by using T.S. Eliot, there's hundreds of references to Hollow Men throughout all of Halo. Fans would instantly find something within a few 
minutes of just looking up what fans have discovered in the past and then go from there and expand from there and make these other connections. And it's awesome because we end up appreciating a lot of the depth that these Halo games had and in turn we get to experience other works that maybe we wouldn't have explicitly gone after and researched otherwise. Luke and I ended up watching this old Dante's Inferno movie from all the way back in the earliest days of film and it's so creepy and interesting. It was a unique thing to watch that we wouldn't have looked up otherwise had we not completely fallen down that whole Dante rabbit hole of ODST. And while Marty also did talk about a big significance with the 1999 and Cortana letters playing a big role and the fact that 1999 is brought up multiple times and some of these hints that he had already dropped like the presentation that we just watched and the Cortana letters being written in 1999, I could easily look into all of this and be like well this is 1999 and it's talking about the way that the world ends so could this be a reference to Y2K? Do all of those Y glyphs mean Y2K? And should we go down that rabbit hole? Because during Y2K there was this whole fear that computers and technology would shut down leading to a societal collapse where technology no longer works, much like the city we see in ODST. Sure, I can, and I hope someone runs with that idea and draws a ton of connections to Y2K since ODST came out just 10 years after that whole hysteria. But unless I'm completely missing the point, and I'm sure Marty's gonna post more cryptic things to lead to some more specific searches and people will continue to look and I will continue to be there looking for more connections and more theories along the way forever pretty much. I think it's safe to say if we want to know at the beginning surface level most direct answer to why the glyphs are there and what do they mean, I think the glyphs are there to have players ask the question why in itself so that you can fall down this rabbit hole of exploration and find all of these literary connections, both the ones that we've already made and the ones that are probably still out there that we haven't even noticed yet. From a lore perspective, it could easily be explained that the other engineers were looking for the Forerunner artifact and were marking points of interest along the way, as we talked about in our other glyph video. The one important question to ask yourself if you feel like this is a cheap cop-out for an answer to what the glyphs mean, would ODST have been as great of a game that's still loved and respected all these years later if there were no mysteries or no questions that players have any reason to go back to and revisit the game? If it was a one and done experience, would you still feel as nostalgic towards that game all these years later? If anything, the game's only grown on me more through this whole process. To this day, it's probably tied with my favorite Halo game of all time. So when in doubt, just remember, you just have to be the bread or something. But if you guys enjoyed this video, I think this will be it on the glyphs for now, unless something big is revealed that we've missed this whole time and then right back in it once again, guys. You can follow us on Twitter at Rocket Elijah. That's my Twitter address. Or you can follow Luke at Rocket Sloth Luke. Or you can join our Discord and join our ODST glyph discussion. There's a link in the description to our Discord along with Marty's Discord as well. That's it for today, though. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video.